dietary restriction and uh, IGF-1 biology. So in this short video, I'm going to discuss the role of diet and diet, meaning calorie restriction, protein restriction, and fasting, and uh, endurance exercise in regulating serum IGF-1 and, in part, uh, the IGF binding proteins. So IGF-1 is a major growth factor that we know is important in aging and cancer. So there is no doubt about it. The data are overwhelming. Let me show you very quickly the evidence to support my claims. So we have lots of data showing that the insulin IGF-1 mTOR pathway one of the major nutrient sensing pathways is heavily involved in aging, longevity, and cancer. So I don't have time to go into the details, but you know you can read this paper we published in Science in 2010, and there is, there is a recent one, a recent review article that has just been published that I wrote with Dadi Laming and, and uh, Cara Green, published in Nature Review Molecular Cell Biology, discussing this topic of how uh, the insulin IGF-1 mTOR pathway is regulating aging and longevity. So insulin and IGF-1 are two important factors, but they are regulated separately. Insulin is produced by beta cells in response to glucose and other factors. IGF-1 is, is regulated by the growth hormone mainly, but also by nutrition, as I'm going to show you. So what is the evidence that uh, IGF-1 is important in aging and longevity? First of all, this is the topic of this paper that I'm going to show you, you know, we publish Aging Cell. We know that uh, calorie restriction without malnutrition in rodents is lowering uh, serum IGF-1, plasma IGF-1 by 20-40%. Here are some of the data. This is a paper published in 1991. As you can see here, compared to ad libitum fed uh, rats, the CR animals, they have significantly lower plasma IGF-1 at 6, 12, uh, 18, 24, and even at 30 months. And the, the, the concentration, as you can he see here, in the CR animals is steady instead of in the in the in the ad libitum fed animals declines with age. So color restriction in rodents is reducing IGF-1 significantly. But as I'm gonna show you in the paper we published in Aging Cell, it does not in humans. So this is one of the major differences between rodents on color restriction and humans on color restriction. We know from multiple studies that in rodents, IGF-1 is super important for longevity. So this is a paper published in Aging Cell in 2009 showing that plasma IGF-1 levels are negatively correlated with median lifespan in mice. This study done in 31 genetically diverse inbred mouse strains. And as you can see, the longer lived strains, those who live more than 600 days, the negative correlation is even stronger, is an R of 0.53 at six months. Uh, now, we know uh, from study of Bart, Key, and Miller that. Uh, dwarf mice uh, deficient in growth hormone and therefore that have lower IGF-1, TSH, lower T3 and prolactin live much, much, much longer and that color restriction and these dwarf mice have an additive effect, as you can see here, compared to ad libitum fed animals. So okay. ad libitum fed animals in blue, color restricted animals in green, the dwarf mice in red and in yellow is, is dwarf mice on color restriction. Not only they live much longer, but there is a huge reduction in the risk of cancer, as you can see here in the, in the, in the snail, snail dwarf mice. Uh, we know that 
early treatment uh, with growth hormone <clears throat> shorten lifespan uh, in the dwarf mice. As you can see here, these are the dwarf mice, these are the control mice, and uh, the dwarf that have been injected with growth hormone have basically the, the lifespan has been shortened similar to the control mice. And they have also basically less stress resistance, cellular stress resistance. The studies from my friend John uh, Kopchik have shown that animals that are overexpressing growth hormone, as you can see here, they are huge, beautiful, high muscle mass, beautiful fur when they're young, of course, compared to the wild type mice. Uh, they have very high IGF-1, as you can see here, 400. Uh, 92 nanogram ml of IGF-1 in the controls and in these uh, overexpressing growth hormone mice, it's double, 868. But look what happens. These are the wild type, females and males. And this, the, this is the lifespan on the these huge muscular growth hormone overexpressing mice. They live much, much, much shorter and they have more new duration, cardiac disease, neoplastic disease. In contrast, the growth hormone receptor knockout mice, again, these are studies by John Kopchik and others that have very, very low plasma IGF-1, as you can see here, and they are dwarfs, they live much, much longer, 50% longer. So these are probably the longest lived genetically induced animals. Not only they live longer, but they have much less cancer, 49% lower incidence of fatal cancers. They have lower number of tumors and they have the grade, the, the, the grade of the tumors is significantly lower in the growth hormone receptor knockout mice. Then we have also data showing that the uh, incidence of kidney disease, that is the second cause of death in, 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 in rodents, is significantly lower in the growth hormone receptor knockout mice, and they have less uh, severe um, lesions, so the grade lesions is much lower in, in the growth hormone receptor knockout mice. And most importantly, almost 50% of the growth hormone receptor knockout mice uh, die at very old age without any gross pathological lesion. So we don't know why they are dead. They are not dying of cancer, cardiovascular disease, neuropath neuropathy, so kidney disease, and degenerative disease. So they, are, they die very old of old age without diseases, without suffering, without pain. We know that growth hormone releasing hormone knockout mice, that therefore for a negative feedback, they have lower growth hormone, lower IGF-1, as you can see here, IGF-1 is very low in these animals, in these growth hormone releasing hormone knockout mice, they live much longer, both male and females. And uh, even if this is controversial, this Holzberg paper in, in 2003 shows that the IGF-1 receptor knockout, heterozygote knockout mice live longer, 30% females and 16% males than wild type. Again, this is controversial because it's not has been not reproduced. And finally, uh, we know that the, uh, the knockout for pregnancy associated plasma protein A, that is a very important metalloproteinase that makes IGF-1 bioavailable, they live 38% 30 longer in terms of average and 25% in terms of maximal lifespan. So these animals, they have more uh, less bioavailable IGF-1, and again, they live longer. So I hope I show you that, you know, different genetic uh, animal models are showing that the color restriction reduction in IGF-1 in rodents is most likely uh, mediated, at least in part, by the IGF-1 reduction. What we know in humans, in humans, we know that uh, we, don't know, we don't have data on, 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 on longevity, but we know that both men and women with a high circulating IGF-1 
concentration, as you can see here in this paper published in Lancet and Science, they have higher risk of breast cancer, especially premenopausal breast cancer, prostate cancer, and colon cancer. So there is no doubt that you know if you have higher circulating IGF-1, your risk of cancer is, is it's, it's much higher because uh, again, IGF-1 triggers the insulin IGF-1 and TOR pathway that is promoting cell proliferation, random mutation, inhibiting DNA repair pathways, anti antioxidant pathways, and is increasing genomic instability. Now, let me go back you know, to the paper. Uh, as I said, in, in this paper we published in Aging Cell uh, in 2008, we asked the question, does color restriction in humans, uh, prolonged color restriction result, result in uh, a reduction in IGF-1 because we have shown that color restriction causes an improvement in insulin sensitivity, reduction in T3, as I'll show you in, in future videos, an increase in cortisol, reduction in uh, uh, free testosterone, free estrogen, increase in SSBG. So many of the typical adaptations, hormonal growth factor adaptation that we see in animals, on CR we see also in humans. But this, this as, I, as I'll show you in this video, is an exception because here we have two set of data. We have data from uh, people that um, have been um, on, uh, this is a randomized clinical trial, is calorie phase one, where we randomize uh, 18 people, 25% uh, calorie restriction for one year, people who have um, been doing exercise for one year and a control healthy lifestyle. Both these groups, they have lost 8% body weight, improving insulin sensitivity and many other parameters. But as you can see here, no change in IGF-1, absolutely no change with color restriction or exercise and no change in the IGF-1, IGF, BP3 ratio. Of course, this is a one year of color restriction in people 50 to 60 years old. Um, maybe these, degree of color restriction is not enough. So we looked into the cronies that are these people that have been practicing for an average of 15 years color restriction without malnutrition, as you can see here, and we don't see a significant reduction in IGF-1, even if the, the reduction in, in insulin, is, it, the fasting insulin is major with color restriction, no change in the, uh, so the, there is no reduction compared to the control group Western diet that is age and sex matched in the IGF-1, igf 3 ratio, but there is a major reduction in high sensitive C-reactive protein. So again, these data are clearly showing that color restriction without malnutrition, even if these people, they have a BMI of, uh, let me see, uh, as you can see here, the BMI of these uh, people is, uh, let me see if I can find the data. Um, yes, 19.7, so they are extremely lean. <clears throat> Uh, and the control group, instead of they had a, 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 a BMI of 20, 25.6. Again, you know, we don't see uh, a reduction in IGF-1, but in contrast, a group of uh, strict vegetarians that we use as a control that are age and sex match with uh, the color restriction and Western diet, the, they have a major reduction in serum IGF-1 and IGF-1, igf bp 3 ratio, okay? Suggesting that protein restriction, because these people, they have a, a, a low, lower protein diet than the color restricted, 
plays a role. I'm going to show you in other videos that is not protein by itself, but probably is a combination of protein and calories. Uh, and uh, I'm also going to show you that exercise doesn't reduce IGF-1. It's really a combination of calories, proteins, and most importantly, fasting that is reducing IGF-1 in humans. Uh, indeed, uh, in this study, let me show you the data. Uh, when I found this data, I asked to... Um, so you see the, the, the vegans, the 28 vegans, they were consuming around 0.76 gram of, of, of protein per kilogram body weight per day, around 10% of uh, intake from proteins comes from proteins compared to the people on calorie restriction that by design, they were eating a high protein diet, 1.7 grams of protein per kilogram body weight, around 24% of their calories were coming from protein. So because of this data, uh, I asked to some of these people on calorie restriction and six of them, they accepted to do this experiment to lower their protein intake. So same calories, but to lower their protein intake from 1.7 that these six people were consuming based on the food diaries to 0.95 grams of protein per kilogram body weight for three weeks. So we measured IGF-1 before and three weeks after this re isocaloric reduction of protein intake. And the results is that the short-term isocaloric reduction in protein resulted in a 25% reduction in serum IGF-1. It went from 194 to 152 with a P of 0.01. And this again suggests that is the combination of calorie restriction and protein restriction. That calorie restriction by itself on a high protein diet is preventing the reduction of uh, IGF-1 driven by diet. So let me summarize. IGF-1 is a powerful growth factor that by triggering the insulin IGF-1 and TOR pathway is promoting aging, cancer, and uh, many other chronic diseases because when there is an excess of IGF-1 and or insulin, you are inhibiting the translocation of FOXO and therefore you are inhibiting autophagy, DNA, DNA repair pathways, antioxidant pathways, and you are promoting um, uh, cell proliferation and therefore random mutations and therefore uh, the increase of uh, the risk, increased risk of cancer or cell senescence because more mutations, more risk of damage to DNA and other important proteins. Now, as I said, there, as I show you in the previous slides, there are multiple animal models showing that IGF-1 is an important player in longevity and that dwarf mice, growth hormone receptor knock, knockout mice, PPA uh, knockout mice, uh, they all, IGF-1 receptor knockout mice, they live longer and healthier than wild type mice. As I just presented, uh, in humans, both in a, a one-year randomized clinical trial, we see no change of IGF-1, no reduction of IGF-1, even if there was an 8% weight loss in, in, uh, in, in IGF-1 or IGF-1, IGF-VP3. Exercise also does not change. And so in this study, this is a unique study because in this study, we obtain 8% weight loss with exercise only, no reduction in IGF-1. As I said, uh, color restriction, uh, long-term color restriction in the cronies does not reduce that does not reduce IGF-1. So people 
sedentary people on a Western diet, endurance athletes, and the people who have been practicing calorie restriction for an average of 15 years, they have similar level of IGF-1 concentration. In contrast, as I said, a, a, a strict vegan diet, uh, people who are practicing a strict vegan diet, they have lower IGF-1 and lower IGF-1, igf 3 ratio, suggesting that protein restriction is important in lowering IGF-1 in humans. Now, we, uh, uh, we have data of the randomized clinical trial that I haven't published yet showing that protein restriction without calorie restriction in isocaloric diet does not reduce IGF-1. Probably you need a combination of uh, uh, a reduction in calories and proteins to reduce IGF-1, or you have to uh, do fasting. Because we know from human studies like this one published in Endocrine Review 1994 that for each day of fasting, IGF-1 drops by approximately 15, 20%. As you can see here, this is som somatomedine C, but it's basically IGF-1 in, 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 in healthy humans. Uh, one day of fasting, it went from two to one point. 1.5, then two days of fasting drop to uh, one, uh, three days of fasting to 0.8, and 0.8 to four days of fasting, and a bit less than 0.8. So basically 50%. And this is in line with some data, the unpublished data, you know, we have on people have been fasting for on average 10 days, and we see a 50% reduction of IGF-1. We're gonna publish soon. So there is no doubt that, you know, prolonged fasting is lowering IGF-1. And when you refeed people after this prolonged fasting on a normal diet, IGF-1 goes back to normal, but people on a normal energy, low protein diet, the recover of IGF-1 is lower instead of people who are, who are uh, refed on a low protein, low energy diet, the IGF-1 keeps dropping, okay? So these data are very important and suggest there are multiple ways to regulate IGF-1 in humans. Is a combination, as you can see here, of uh, protein and calories. We don't know yet which, which type of the composition of the proteins, how important they are. The amino acid composition is just quantity of quality. Uh, we know that again, fasting is another mean, especially you can start to reduce IGF-1 and then by having a lower protein, lower calories or a mix of the two, you can keep your IGF-1 lower for longer. And we know, unpublished data again, that calorie restriction uh, uh, doesn't reduce IGF-1, but it does increase big ways IGF, BP-1 and BP-2, therefore reducing the bioavailability of IGF-1. So for today is, uh, I, I, I finished this video. I hope it was informative. As you can understand, there are many questions to be answered, but compared to 2008, when we started to explore the effects of diet and exercise in regulating IGF-1, as I said, a major growth factor, pro-longevity, uh, pro-aging factor, uh, pro-cancer factor, growth factor, we know more, much more on uh, the lifestyle regulation of IGF-1 and the IGF-binding proteins. Thank you for listening as always.